Uh, my name is Tim Carter. I direct the Center for Urban Ecology at Butler University. Okay, great. So, um, can you just explain why you think that the Rivers of the Anthropocene project is important? Sure. I, I, I think this, this project is important because of the... Um, the vast variety of disciplines that are represented and the opportunity to hear both uh, ideas that people are working on but then also um, the ways that people approach questions in order for answers to be developed in a way that are uh, synthetic with other people. So by that I guess I mean um, uh, as an ecologist, I'm an ecologist and, and my background gives me a particular way of viewing the world and the problems that are out there and therefore the answer to those problems whereas other people have very different methods about uh, through which they answer those same questions. By hearing how those people operate and address those questions, I think we can come to really, really interesting uh, solutions around this, this theme of rivers. And um, I guess the second thing is the global perspective here is really great. So we're hearing not just um, North American or even regional uh, concerns or um, constraints, but then from a global perspective, you can actually see a lot of similarities between what's important in, in Europe and the UK, and then what's interesting or in, important in North America as well. Now, I know a little bit about, just a little, tiny little bit about what you're trying to do around the city and so forth, and uh, the wonderful grant that you guys got and things you're implementing. And I wonder if you could maybe take this opportunity to try to explain how that would be impactful on, you know, the knowledge base and improving the river systems around here, making people more aware of it. Yeah, the main, what, the project that we're working on is really focused on, um, making these areas that are connected to waterways in the city um, relevant to people in a unique way. And the way that we're doing that is using um, a variety of art forms, including visual art and dance and music, um, as an engagement tool to communicate scientific um, uh, content and also scientific thinking. So we want people to be curious about their city environment. And to do that, we think the arts are a really great way of um, uh, provoking in some ways and inspiring people to ask new and different questions about the world that's around them in their neighborhoods. So it's very contextual and place-based. And I think that, that makes those places um, uh, interesting areas for the, the broader community to engage with their surroundings. Hopefully it can be a model for other cities as well to think about how they can use um, different disciplines, including the arts, as a way to translate the science information. Yeah, uh, I'm actually on the project. I'm an undergraduate researcher, and one of the things that um, Jason you know, talked about throughout was how we're trying to get the, the science community and the um, you know, the, the, the humanities to like speak the same language and be on the same page and so forth. Yeah. And, and it seems to me that's something that you're knee deep in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so I was wondering if maybe you could comment on how this process might help that in some way, yeah. or how you envision it might. Yeah, well, I think one is just the uh, exposure to the way the, the other disciplines are talking about these subjects. Could you, could you restate it in a yeah. way, like a, a statement? Like so I think one what's, way. yeah, well, one way that this, um, one way that this language can be um, understood and in some ways uh, translated across these disciplines is by hearing from other people um, and hearing the way in which they communicate probably similar concepts and ideas, but they might use very different language to do that. So by them um, explaining what they do, then um, and us hearing, and us being myself and other scientists potentially, um, we would be uh, have opportunities to respond in such a way that um, that our language might even be modified, or we would not assume things about the way we talk about uh, river systems, or even just more broadly about science. That when we're talking to a scientific audience, maybe really um, kind of. Um, just uh, there's nothing to explain about it, I guess. So it, it, this, this process forces people to articulate um, uh, their language because they know they're speaking to a, a broad and diverse audience. I see your point. Um, now, maybe you could just talk about what you think um, people should or might take away from this conference specifically. Yeah. Well, I think people should take away from this conference um, 
the diverse views and the diverse uh, opportunities for um, engaging with these the topic of a river system. I think a lot of people think it's either relegated to maybe physical science or biological science, or it's just simply a social construct and a historical perspective or something. I think what we get here is that there are all these disciplines that are interacting together and the solutions that they're proposing are going to be interdisciplinary and necessarily draw on all those disciplines. So um, I think a real important outcome of, of not only this conference but this project as a whole moving forward is that people will learn different ways of engaging with each other and then learn hopefully different ways of translating that into something that's meaningful for the broader population that, that doesn't have the opportunity to attend.